This video is going to cover how to remove this brake drum from a two-wheel drive second-gen Toyota pickup. There are four 12 millimeter socket requiring nuts on the back. You remove those, we can slide this out. Now the reason I'm having to remove this is because I need to replace a couple of these wheel studs. That's what this is, this nut that protrudes out. As you can see, I snapped this one off. And different people will give you different methods on how to do this. And the one I'm going to be showing you is there are two little bolts, two little bolt holes right here. One here and one here that are actually threaded that you can stick a bolt into. Now the size of the bolt that I'm going to be using is an 8 millimeter and a 1.25 thread pitch. And I have not seen anybody else's YouTube video actually explain to you what size bolt to use. They just say, oh, go ahead and put a bolt in there because anyone will work. No, you need a specific one. Because my brake drum is pretty much seized on, you know, just caked on with rust and years of abuse, I was able to get part of it to come off. So to come off kind of an angle like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this bolt into one side, the side that's giving me trouble. Make sure it threads in there properly. Now I don't have a 12 millimeter socket handy, so I'm just gonna use my little crescent wrench here. You don't wanna apply a lot of force. If you do, you're gonna start stripping out that thread. So watch that thread as you're tightening it. Now as you continue to tighten this, again, make sure that that's not stripping out. If it becomes too hard and you're wondering, should I stop, should I continue? Set that down, get yourself a big hammer. Again, I'm trying to film this with one hand, one tool in one hand and the camera in the other. So I've got one end down and I've got my knee in the middle and I'm going to roll this with my knee. All you're gonna do is just hit this sucker fairly hard depending on how baked on it is. And just keep doing that, roll it around and hit it, roll it around and hit it, roll it around and hit it. And then if you notice that it's not coming off at all, hit it harder. Keep hitting it harder, keep hitting it harder. It's very thick steel or iron or whatever this is, so it can take it. As you can see we're starting to get some gap down in there. Starting to pull it away from the plate. So I'll try tightening this a little bit more. That's the sound of the rust breaking. As soon as I get this drum far enough out, it'll just come right off. And this should not be very difficult. You shouldn't have to torque the sucker down. Should be fairly easy. Maybe five or 10 pounds of pressure. Right here, as I'm turning this wrench. Five to 10 pounds. Should not be more than that. Looks like that bolt worked out just fine. Except for the fact that it's not long enough. Now what I'm going to do is just pop this out so we can put a new wheel stud in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pound this out with a pin and I'm going to slide this in from the other side. 
it'll grab right here where these little teeth, these little ridges are. Now what you do is you put this on, you put everything back together back in the vehicle, you put your wheel on, you tighten your lugs on. After you do that, you go for a drive. You make some left turns, you make some right turns, you come back and you tighten the lugs down again. That'll incrementally, as you keep doing that, start pulling this in. And then it'll finally seat inside your uh, little space here inside your, your rotor, I guess that's what this is called. Then go for another drive, make some left turns, make some right turns, tighten it down again. Eventually this will finally seat in there. Well, that was super easy. I just used a 3 8 extension here for my socket wrench. Pounded it in there with the little mini sledge. There you go. Spin the rotor around so that you got some room in here. Another thing you're going to want to take into consideration is that there are different sizes of these, so you want to make sure you get the proper size. If you don't get one that has a big enough little rim around here, then it's not going to seat into this drum. Now make sure you get the one that is properly sized for your little rotor here. If you don't get the one that sits just like this where it doesn't want to go in, if you get the one that's like this, where it goes all the way in and then bounces around, this sucker will come out on you. It'll get caught up in all this braking stuff back here so that when you're going 90 miles an hour down the highway, this is gonna pop out and then essentially it's like slamming on the e-brake. Your rear axle's gonna lock up and you're gonna go spinning out of control. I've had that happen. So make sure you get the one that just barely fits in there because it's gonna have to be squeezed in that's why you're going to drive around and then tighten it down. Drive around, tighten it down. That's going to slowly pull it into this little rotor. If it doesn't seat in there properly, then you better hope like hell that it doesn't come out. Now, let's say that you accidentally bought the wrong one. Let's say you're broken down on the highway. you got nothing better to do. Uh, well, you could try to weld this in place if you wanted to. Uh, again, don't recommend that. I've had those welds break and then still goes flying out, slams up the rear tires and all kinds of hell. So uh, if you absolutely had to, if you just put this in there, maybe glue it in place just enough or put a piece of tape on there just to hold it long enough so that you can get a lug nut on there and try to tighten it down. The only problem is this isn't going to sit still while you try to tighten a lug. So it'll just be loose and then when you go to try to take it off it doesn't want to loosen up it holds onto that lug and that lug turns with it so make sure you get the right one just in general you really don't want to fuck with that so to make sure I got the right one I went to my local auto parts store and had them run the info through the computer this is the one that I got back it is a 12 millimeter with a 1.5 thread pitch. So to install this, just to get it started anyway, just long enough that I can get the wheel on there and everything, I'm gonna use my channel locks. Get behind it just enough to press it into place just a little bit. Now, very gently, Put your brake drum back on there, remembering that if you accidentally hit that new bolt, you might accidentally knock it out of place, so be very careful. So make sure when you look down into one of these holes that you got it pressed all the way up against that rotor, and we slide the axle shaft back in. Don't forget that when you get to this position, you want your brake bleeder at the top. You want your e-brake cable right here facing toward the front of the vehicle. In order to get this to fit into place and make sure that those gear teeth line up inside your differential, you might have to spin the rotor independent of this rear section here. 
Don't forget to tighten your bolts back on. Now here comes a little bit of a difficult part here. You're going to have to pick up your tire and very gently place it onto the wheel studs. You don't want to accidentally hit the one you just put in and end up knocking it out of place. Now again, after you've gotten your lugs tightened down, drive around for one mile, two miles, five miles at the most, pull over, and then re-tighten your lugs. If you don't do that, then you risk that that wheel stud is not going to seat into the rotor properly, and then it's going to come back out, or your lug nut's going to come flying off while you're driving down the road, that's going to start loosening up the wheel tension on the other lug nuts and then they're all going to start coming off and then you're going to lose a wheel on the highway. It's up to you whether or not you want to do it the right way or if you just want to risk it.